next step is to step away from what I'm doing, which is just using the web interface, which can be a little challenging to navigate. It can be hard to find what you're looking for, and you got to. I tend and to if you're have on, to use. If you're on the Twitter website, sorry to interrupt that's what you. I, that's what I'm on. Yeah. Yeah. It's not, uh, you have to click onto different pages to see your at replies and your private messages yeah. and such. And there's so no real way to see You're always having to flip back and forth. On. So it's, it's nice when you can have one column, two columns, three columns. It's all there right in front of you. And, and what mm -hmm. application, you know, Seismic, that's what you've been using on your I system. use Seismic, but I'm pretty sure from, what, from talking to other people that TweetDeck is virtually the same thing. Yeah. It's pretty much, it, like it has all the same features and layout and such. So what do you find? So let's let's get into Seismic just because you've got experience with that. I just mentioned TweetDeck cuz it's really it's probably the most popular one. I see. It's the one I hear the most about anyway. Right. So seismic.com is where you pick up Seismic. So let's uh, let's click on install the Seismic desktop. So this is going to take us away from having to use the Twitter website and will allow us to get into uh, using an application to do this. So I need to actually have Adobe Air installed to do this, which is basically you know, going to allow us to adult, uh, install Air applications, which is what this Seismic app is made, made with. So the way that I got to that, to get to Adobe Air, and I'll post the links in the show notes for this episode, but just underneath Install Seismic Desktop, just click on Adobe Air, and then I'm on Ubuntu Linux. It's already detected that I'm on Linux. And it's giving me English. If you want to change that, you can change that. I'm going to click Download Now. It's a 13 meg file, so it shouldn't take too long to get here. So I'm just going to... I'll just save that to my desktop. Adobe Air is finished downloading, so I've just uh, got that file on my desktop. That's giving me Adobe Air installer.bin. Right-click on it, go Properties, go Permissions, and check off Allow Executing File as Program. Make sure that's checked. Hit Close. Double click on the file. No, it's not going to allow me to do that. So let's bring up our terminal and jump onto your desktop. This is really, really simple. I'm zooming through it because it's nice and simple. CD space desktop is where I saved it to. Capital D on desktop. And then dot slash Adobe Air installer dot bin. Case sensitive. All I did was put a capital A, lowercase d, and hit the tab button. Make sure you have that dot slash. Hit enter. If all goes well, we should start seeing the Adobe Air installer in just a moment. There it is. And that's, I've clicked install, enter my super user password, and it tells me that it is installing. I kind of look like the looks of the Adobe Air stuff. It's kind of like themed to a darker theme. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know, something about that it looks cool. Okay, so we'll let that install. Adobe Air is going to let us install Seismic. Adobe Air is installed. I'm just going to hit finish. That'll take me back to the terminal, so now I can close that. Now let's get back to our Seismic website. Seismic.com. Let's see if this works. Install Seismic Desktop. When I clicked on it, it didn't seem to do anything. Well, there it goes. Okay, because I've got to have Adobe Air installed. Yeah. in order. For, see the, the connection? And I clicked it twice, and so now it's coming up twice. But let's abort the second one. Okay. Would you like to open or save this file? Now, I'm not, I, I don't pretend to be too familiar with Adobe Air. In fact, Seismic, I think, is the first or second program that I ever installed in Adobe Air. So I don't code for it. I don't know anything about it beyond it seems to work fairly well for the, those who do use it. And it's cross-platform uh, cross compatible, which is what, to me, is, is all right. That's cool. So do I, what do I want to do? I want to open this with Adobe Air getting ready to install this application. How cool is that? So it's pretty easy, eh? Uh, so it gives you a little bit of information about it. Seismic desktop, okay. Install. Installation location. Everything looks fine to me. You could put that in a different location if you don't want all users to have access to it. That's cool. I guess, like, the next step is really, literally, just to set up my yeah, Twitter so account. Yeah, so now you're going to want to do things like... So enter my Twitter username, yeah. Robbie Ferguson. And then right there below is... Add. Your Okay, so now I want to enter my password, which we don't generally broadcast to the world. <laughs> Otherwise, people will be like, why is he tweeting such strange things? And there's like 40,000 people all tweeting under my account. Uh, okay, so enable notifications is checked. That's cool, right? That's like pop-ups and things. 70% uh, API usage. 
I don't really understand all this stuff yet, but we'll get through this and we'll learn it. It looks like the defaults are good. How many API, you, how much API usage do you want to use per hour? Which I gather Twitter limits how much your API can use per hour to protect them from spammers and stuff. Yeah, so if you if you're sending the same, posting the same message over and over again, then get it gets blocked. it gets flagged as spam, and you could get your account suspended for that. Mm -hmm. um, auto refreshing. Yes. I would put them all as the same because you wanna you wanna get your right replies and messages. Do you want to get them your your tweets? after one minute is the default, replies are after two minutes, and direct messages are after three. Direct messages, though, I don't get a lot of, so I don't really need it to check. A lot of people well, just reply. But I can see having my replies. Well, I can tell you what the benefit of, of the private direct messages is. Oh? Um, if you're having a conversation with someone that you think will be interesting and beneficial to other people who are also following, then you would use at replies because then it's public. But if you want to have a private conversation with someone where maybe other people won't really get what you're talking about or it just they would be annoyed because they wouldn't be able to understand what's going on and you just want to keep it private, then, then you would use the direct messages. And sometimes I do have conversations with people that it's just it's not something I want to be public. So right. I, I use direct messages instead of out replies. But I usually just <coughs> used out replies. Okay. Well, these, these sliders look absolutely wonky. So I've, got, I've been able to get tweets to one minute, replies to one minute, direct messages to three minutes. That sounds it good. It won't let you it, make it It the just kind of goes all weird. Yeah. So I'll just hit save. <laughs> is that safe to do? Can I push save and see what happens? Oh, yeah. Three minutes isn't long to wait. That's not long to wait. <laughs> I am extremely impatient, though. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, that was a cool sound. People on the... People didn't get to hear that. Yes, it has sound effects. Wicked. <laughs> 14 private messages for Robbie Ferguson. See, I've never done this. So this, is, this created a little guy up here in the top. How do I bring it up? Open. Robbie Ferguson at mm -hmm. Twitter. <laughs> I, I changed this guy. I right Are you on confused it yet? <laughs> I right-clicked on this dude on the desktop and hit open, and then it asked me if I wanted to mark it as trusted, and I said yes. <laughs> there it is! And it made noises. That's awesome. Okay, and so you can size it to be full screen if you like. Wicked. Yeah. Okay. So now here's my account. You right? didn't set up Facebook though. I didn't because I don't want people Facebooking me. They're not. They're just doing their Facebook updates and you just get to read it. Well, I know that. They but don't know. I, but I don't want to be giving out my Facebook credentials on the air because I don't use Facebook. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. Yeah. But Becca assures me that it works. It's just really cool because you can comment on people's Facebook statuses and such without having so to go to it Facebook. It basically turns Facebook's what I'm doing thing into a microblog, essentially. Yeah, so well, you can interact on thing. Facebook now without having to go to Facebook. Nice. That's and same cool. thing here with Twitter. I find that the Twitter website goes down like crazy. There's so many times that Twitter.com is down. Or you get a message that says we're... Uh, we're Currently processing too many tweets. Try again. But if you use an application like this, then you don't have to deal with trying. that. Yeah. Don't have to deal with that anymore. I just bring up the app and it works. Yeah. Very cool. So I can do all of my, and I can see my at replies, stuff that people have sent okay. to me. Okay. Yeah. So right now you've got it set up just like Twitter.com where right. you have to click on each individual thing. Okay. So um, click on at replies. Okay. I'm gonna bring. I'm gonna change cameras here because I don't know if there's anybody's personal information in there. Does it look safe? It looks pretty safe. So it actually brought up a new replies window over here when I clicked on replies. How mm -hmm. did that happen? So here's my. Well, you. you I click, click on, on replies and it brings up this wicked cool thing over here. So I can see not only the stuff that I would normally see in my in my own home, and that's which what, is what everyone, everybody has said that I'm following. Them. Well, this is cool then because a lot of the people that I follow, I don't actually follow. Because well, it's hard to keep track with a gazillion posts. It's hard to keep track. Yeah, it really is. 